Hello everyone, my name's James Felino, and I'm here to bring you another edition of the Gold Coast Property and Auction Sales Results. This week we're going to be covering the week of Feb the 28th up until March the 6th and like we do every week we'll go through the clearance rates Australia-wide and then we'll break down some of the properties. So I'm just going to share my screen for you guys like we do and we're going to get straight into it and have a look. So these are the auction results for last week. Uh, there's been a little bit of media speculation that the market's starting to pull back. Um, but as you can see, Victoria's right up at 85% clearance rate. And that's on the back of having about 900 auctions as well. New South Wales is right up at 90% with about just under 600 auctions. Queensland, not really uh, an auction state as much as the other two. But again, their clearance rate is still quite strong at 87 we did see Queensland dip in, uh, into the 70s towards the end of last year. When it comes to sales volume, Victoria is at number one with over 2,200 properties sold, New South Wales slightly under 2,100, and Queensland in third place at about 1,500. So the market's really kicked off quite well at the start of the year. So let's, uh, let's go straight into the properties. This is the first one I'd like to show you. This is at 10 Meadowbrook Crescent in Merrimack small block of 340 square metres, but this was a three bed, one bath, brick and tile home, renovated uh, bathroom, it needs a bit of work as you can see from the, from the roof and the pictures there. But for someone wanting to come into property and have a, a land component, uh, this was good buying at 624,000. The next one we're going to look at, we're going to head to Southport. We've got this property here. This was an auction property. This was at 15 Lara Avenue, Southport. As you can see, it's a brick and tile. It's in a great location. Had air con. Uh, they're talking about rental return potentially of 700 per week. It was on a 506 square metre block. That's the home there. And this was sold at 736,000. The next one we're going to look at, we're going to look at this one. This was at 17 Earling Crescent in Narang. This was a three bed, two bath with ample accommodation for cars. 640 square metre block with a large approved shed to the rear. Really nice updated and modern kitchen and throughout the home, air con. And that home there, like I said, that one there sold 765000 the next one we're going to look at, we're going to go to Molondina. We've got this one at 14 Forest Avenue. This was a two bed, one bath, two car home. As you can see from the picture, it was brick and tile. It was on about 632 square metres. Uh, could do potentially with an update. As you can see, still very original condition. And this home here sold for 705,000. So we're still finding that you can find a home on land underneath that 800. This one was just a tad over. This was at Varsity Lakes. This was at 27 Babu uh, in Varsity Lakes. This was a, a brick, single level, brick and tile, had solar on this home. Block size was 400 uh, or so, 429 square metres. It was a four bed, two bath, two car home. And this one here so at, in Varsity sold at 830. The next one we're gonna move up, move up to Northern Gold Coast. We've got this one here. This was at one Ashbourne um, in bigger waters. It was a corner block, double story brick veneer. As you can see, quite nice on the inside, very original. But the best thing about this property was the fact that it was set up for dual living. So when we get to the site plan, you'll see it, there it is there. So it had a, uh, a two bedroom set up downstairs with the kitchen, and then it also had a, a two bedroom set up upstairs. So potentially two rental incomes, and that one there sold at 820,000. Next one we're gonna look at is this one here. Uh, this was uh, at six Dakota Place in Oxenford. This was uh, on 1,378 square metres. It was a four bed, two bath, six car home, brick and tile. As you can see, lovely cathedral ceilings, uh, really nice. It had a big shed at the back with a hoist. So anyone wanting to work from home, this kind of bit would have had a, been a great setup, close to the M1. And this home here sold for 940,000. We'll move on to some smaller ones, for so some units, uh, apartments and townhouses. We've got this one in Southport. This was at 15, five to seven High Street, Southport. It was a three bed, one bath, 
one car apartment, 100 square metres. It was brick, one of 15, and that one sold great buying at 330,000. The next one we're going to look at is this one. This was in Bundle. This was at 73, 100 Racecourse Road. It was a two bed, one bath, two car townhouse. Um, as you can see, lovely pool in the complex, brick and tile, uh, ample room, would rent at 420 to 450, and that sold at 450,000. The next one we're going to look at is this townhouse in Labrador. This was a three bed, two bath, one car townhouse, had a lovely renovation done to it quite big internally at 131 square metres, being renovated. And this one here in Labrador sold at 635,000. We're gonna look at one more townhouse and it's this one here. This was on the Isle of Capri. This was at 10 slash 111 Salerno Street. This was in Capri Gardens. It was two storey, two bed, two uh, bath, two car accommodation quite big internally at 177 square metres, cathedral ceilings, also had your own private courtyard. And this one here, uh, Isla Capri, sold 611,000. The last one we're going to look at uh, for villas was this one in Bundle. This was a, a villa, had, didn't have an address, body corporate was 80. I had a pool, uh, pool and tennis court in the complex. It was a three bed, two bath, two car home. And this one here sold at 565,000. We'll look at a couple of houses and we'll just go slightly above our range. We've got this one here at 10 Warrego Way in Helensvale. This was on 4,700 square meters. So just over an acre. It was a brick home, first time sold since the owners built it. Um, like I said, Quite a big block of land, had a swimming pool, tennis court, not too far from the M1, and it sold for 1.65 million. The next one we're going to look at is this one. Um, just wanting to show you this. This is a block of land that sold on the weekend down in Palm Beach. Uh, this was a 1079 Gold Coast Highway. It was an empty block of land and it sold for 2.2 million. The reason I want to show you this one is because that same block of land was sold last year also, uh, so it was sold last year in June, as you can see, and there it sold for 2.4. So potentially there was a $200,000 decrease on that sale. Um, not sure why, but these are some things that we sort of tend to, to see from time to time. The next one we're gonna look at is this property here. Uh, this was in Nobby Parade. This was 115 Nobby Parade. It was a beautiful home, extensively renovated, 405 square metres of land, four bed, three bath, four car accommodation. Um, and as you can see, just wanted to show you this one. This home was actually purchased seven years ago and it was purchased for 592,000 and it's sold now for 1.91 million. The last property I'd like to show for today is this one. This was at Jefferson's Lane, quite an exclusive beachfront area on the Gold Coast. This property was 215 to 217, so it was the old property on the, on the left, plus the block of land. This actually has permits for an eight-storey, eight-apartment development, one per level. The property sold at 13.5 million which means the, to a developer, the raw value of per apartment site is about 1.7 million before they've even started to build. Um, so just to see what developers are paying for prices on the Gold Coast. So they're the properties for this week. Uh, I hope uh, you've got some more knowledge on what, where the property market is at on the Gold Coast. It's still very strong. Things are selling quite well. If you need any assistance with your buying, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Otherwise, until next week, good luck with your property hunting and we'll see you then. Have a good one.